In this video, I'm going to show you five of the most popular dividend ETFs in Australia and how they compare against each other. So if you're an Australian investor looking for a reliable stream of passive income, then this video is definitely for you. All five of these ETFs carefully screen and track the best Australian companies that have historically paid consistent high dividends over the years. I will compare the fees, performance, dividend yield and several other important factors for each ETF. So I would encourage you to watch the entire video if you are serious about creating a new passive income stream this year. So if you're interested, let's get straight into it. So if you look at this table that I've made for you, these are the five most popular dividend ETFs listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. You can see the ticker symbol for each ETF at the top here and it's followed by which investment company it's managed by and the ETF's official name. So for example, the first ETF is VHY, which is the Vanguard Australian Shares Hard Yield ETF. So if you're new to investing, an ETF is usually run by an investment company who manages what companies get invested in the fund and how much money is allocated to each company. And in return, we as investors pay them a management fee for looking after the fund. In this case, the investment company is Vanguard, which is one of the biggest investment companies in the world. And if we want to find out more about VHY, we can do so by going on their website. Here you'll be able to find all the important stats about the ETF, which I have already listed for you on this table. Furthermore, if you want a more simplified summary of the ETF, you can look for the fact sheet. These days, almost every listed ETF will have a fact sheet on their website, and it's very easy to find. All you have to do is Google the ticker symbol of the ETF you're looking for, and it's usually one of the first links that pop up. But for your convenience, I'll leave a link to the website and fact sheet of every single ETF in this video down in the description below. So in addition to VHY, we also have SYI, which is the SDPR MSCI Australia Select High Dividend Yield Fund. Oof, that was a mouthful. Then we have IHD, which is the iShares S&P ASX Dividend SSG screened ETF. Oof iShares is owned by BlackRock, which is the largest asset manager in the world, closely followed by Vanguard. Then you have RDV, which is the Russell Investments High Dividend Australian Shares ETF. And finally, to round off the list, you have ZYAU, which is the Global X S&P and ASX 300 High Yield Plus ETF. Now all these ETFs track very similar companies, but there is one that is a bit different to the rest and that is IHD. And that is because all the companies in this ETF are ESG screened to help avoid companies engaged in activities that are controversial or have adverse effects on climate. In other words, it's an ethical ETF. ESG stands for Environmental, Social and Corporate Governance, which refers to a set of standards that encourages companies to act responsibly and ethically. So if you are into ethical investing, then you may want to look more into this ETF. So back to the table, if you look at the first row, we have the inception date, which is when each of these ETFs were created. You can see most of them started at around 2010, with the exception of ZYAU, which started a bit later in 2015. So most of these ETFs have been around for over a decade, so you can say they are relatively well established. Moving on to the next row, a management fee is charged to invest in each ETF. It's important to note that you do not have to pay the management fee directly to the ETF managers. The management fees are accrued daily and are deducted monthly from the fund. So that means they are already reflected in the daily share price of the ETF. From the list, IHD has the lowest fees at 0.23%, which is quite interesting because ethical ETFs usually charge a slightly higher fee to do the ESG screening. VHY is the second cheapest at 0.25%, with the remaining three funds charging around 0.35% each. So because IHD and VHY are run by the two largest investment companies, they can afford to lower their fees. If we look at the fund size, you can see that VHY is the largest by far with $2.77 billion invested in the fund. This makes it almost 10 times larger than the next largest fund, which is SYI with $353 million invested. This may be due to the fact that Vanguard is a highly trusted brand in Australia and investors flock to their ETFs because they have such a great track record with all their products all over the world. The smallest fund on the list is Z YAU at $66 million invested. This may be due to the fact that it's a newer ETF and it's run by a lesser known provider in Global X. So let's now compare the last five year performance of each ETF. To properly explain how to assess the performance, I want you to focus on these three rows on the table. The first row is the dividend performance in the last five years. The second row is the growth performance in the last five years. And the third row is the total performance in the last five years. I have split the first two rows into dividend and growth performance because the total performance of the ETF is measured in two ways. One, you have the income component and two, you have the growth component. And when you combine them, you get the total performance. So to explain it a bit more clearly, the income component is how much dividends you are paid in percentages per year. And the growth component is how much the share price has increased or decreased per year. Now, not all ETFs provide you with the breakdown of the income and growth. As you can see, IHD and ZYAU only provide the total performance on their website. So unfortunately, you can't see the breakdown in dividend and growth for these two. But you can see them for VHY, SYI and RDV. 
Since these are dividend focused ETFs, you can see most of the returns are made from the dividends. In fact, SYI and RDV, as you can see from the growth performance, both averaged a 1% loss on the share price in the last five years, and their total performance is carried by their dividends. So this is the reason why some investors prefer to invest in dividend ETFs over growth ETFs. A dividend ETF is more likely to give you consistent stable income every year, whereas a growth ETF may potentially return more in the future, but it will be less predictable every year. So some years they might give you a better than average return, and other years they might give you a negative return. So that is why some retired people prefer to invest in dividend stocks, so they are paid consistently to cover their yearly expenses. So overall, you can see VHY has performed the best in the last five years with an 8.55% average per year in total performance. And maybe this explains why the fund size is much higher than the rest. Investors tend to follow where the money is. And to be clear, 8.55% is the average return per year for the last five years. So it doesn't necessarily mean VHY returned the same 8.55% each year. Some years may have been better than others, but once you average it out, it's 8.55% per year. Also, please note that the total performance assumes that you reinvest all your dividends that you receive back into the fund. And I'll explain how to do this later in the video. The next highest performer was SYI with a 6.65% average return for the last five years. And the lowest performer on the list is ZYAU at negative 0.6%. I think this may be due to the fact that they are more focused on mining companies, which are much more volatile by nature. So the ETF is still paying a decent dividend over the years, but the share price has been going down, which is dragging down the total performance. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. These are not buy recommendations. Please do your own research or seek the help of a professional if you would like financial advice that is suited to your unique situation. Also please note ETFs are not completely safe. While they are considered safer than individual stocks due to the fact that they are diversified, please note that they are still at the mercy of the stock market which is influenced by many external factors, some of which are out of our control. In addition, please note that dividend ETFs are not a get-rich-quick investment, but historically speaking, they are a solid long-term wealth building investment. Especially if you reinvest the dividends, it will compound your wealth over time. Having said all that, let's move on. Now you may be wondering how often dividends are paid out for these ETFs. So the good news is every ETF on this list pays dividends quarterly, so you'll be paid four times per year. To get more information about the dividend dates, you can go on their website. So let's go to the VHY website as an example. Once it loads up, let's click prices and distributions on the left here. And if you scroll down, we can see the distribution history. FYI, distribution is just another fancy way of saying dividends. On this page here, you can work out how much dividend you will receive and when you will receive it. So let's go through each of these terms. Distribution date is basically the announcement date of when the next dividend information will be available. The date is usually the last day of the quarter. So in this case, the last one was on the 31st of December, 2022, where they announced how much and when the dividends will be paid. So the next distribution date will be on the 31st of March, 2023. CPU stands for cents per unit, which is how many cents you'll receive per share. So for example, if you had 10 shares of VHY, you would receive 79 cents per share in the last distribution. So you would have received $7.90 in total. The X entitlement date, or also known as the X dividend date, is usually set one business day before the record date. This basically means if you buy shares of VHY before this date, you'll receive the next dividend payout. The record date is the cutoff date set by the ETF managers to determine who receives a dividend. You need to be an owner of the shares on this date to receive your payment. The X entitlement date is usually set one business day before the record date because it often takes two business days for a trade to fully settle. So if you buy a share of VHY, it will take you two days to become an owner. So as long as you buy the ETF before the X entitlement date, you will receive the dividend in the next payout. Payable date is when you are paid the dividends into your nominated account. So when you buy one of these ETFs, you have the option to receive a cash dividend or have it automatically reinvested back into the fund. And if you do decide to reinvest, you will get a small discount on the price, which is the reinvestment price as shown on the screen. So moving on to the next row, we have the dividend yield, which represents how much each ETF pays out in dividends each year relative to its share price. You can calculate the dividend yield by dividing the annual dividends per share to the current share price. So these are the current dividend yield which is showing what each ETF paid out in the last year. According to the table, SYI has the highest dividend yield at 7.25% and VHY has the lowest at 5.7%. However, I'm not a big fan of using the dividend yield as an accurate indicator of performance. And that is because a higher dividend yield does not necessarily mean it's a good thing. The percentage can be skewed if the share price went down dramatically. So if we look back at SYI's 5 year growth performance, it's actually negative 0.99% which indicates that the share price has been steadily going down in the past 5 years which in turn is pushing up the dividend yield. So I would recommend not relying solely on the dividend yield, but rather look at both the dividend and growth returns for a better indicator of the ETF's performance. So now we move on to the second part of the table. And on the next row, we have the benchmark. Each ETF on the list tracks a different benchmark index. 
And these aren't just any regular index that anyone can just make up. They are regulated by ASIC and must meet a certain standard for the ASX to allow an ETF to track them. So whatever that particular index does, the ETF will try to mirror it. And in case you're wondering, two ETFs can track the same index. And if they do, then theoretically, these two ETFs should perform about the same, give or take the management fee. I won't go through each index as it will take too long, but you can Google them if you're interested. The next row shows the total holdings or how many companies each ETF has invested in. VHY has the largest holding with 73 companies, which means it's more diversified than the rest. This means that the performance should be less volatile given the larger number of companies. SYI has the least amount of holdings with 34 companies because they have a stricter selection process. But as you can see, each ETF on the list has at least over 30 companies, so they are still pretty diversified. And just because the company is currently in the fund does not mean it will be there forever. The holdings are continually scrutinized and updated every year. And if a company does not perform to the expectations of the ETF, then they are replaced with a better performing one. On the next row, I have listed the top 10 holdings for each ETF. These make up approximately 50 to 70% of all holdings for each ETF. I won't go through them all, but you can pause the screen and have a look for yourself if you are curious. I do notice that each ETF tries to diversify into a few different sectors. And it is worth noting that in Australia, our big dividend companies are made up of banks, mining companies, and supermarkets. And what I also noticed is most of these ETFs have a large emphasis on banks and mining companies. It's interesting that Woolworths or Coles did not make up the top 10 for any of these ETFs. Maybe fund managers simply don't rate supermarkets as highly as banks and mining companies for reliable dividends. By the way, if you are interested in seeing the rest of the holdings, then you can find it in each of the ETF's website. Again, I'll link them down below for your convenience. The next row is showing the franking credit percentage of each ETF. If you are new to investing, a franking credit is a tax credit which represents a tax a company has already paid on its profits in Australia. Dividends are usually taken from the company's profits. Therefore, the dividend already paid to investors are already taxed. During your tax return, if you receive dividends from a stock that has franking credits, you are eligible to claim the tax credit and reduce the overall tax you need to pay. And if you're interested, I've previously done a video on how to do your tax return with your stocks, and I'll link it down below. The franking percentage is how much of a percentage you can claim in franking credits on your tax return. And in this case, you can claim the majority of the franking credits for each ETF on the list. So that is an extra bonus for investing in dividend ETFs in Australia. And the final row is telling us that for every ETF on this list, you can set it to automatically reinvest the dividends. This is known as a dividend reinvestment plan or DRP for short. As I mentioned earlier, you can choose to receive your dividends in cash or you can elect to automatically reinvest it. This means it will save all your dividends and once you have enough money to buy a new share, it will automatically reinvest it for you. And if you want to know how to set up a dividend reinvestment plan, I have made a video about this which I'll link in the description. By the way, if you made it this far into the video, the secret word today is VIBE. So comment that down below so I know who you are. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel because I'll be making a lot more personal finance videos like this in the future and you don't want to miss them. So now you know the five most popular dividend ETFs in Australia for passive income. If you want to know more about other popular ETFs in Australia, check out this video on screen where I reveal 10 other popular ETFs in Australia. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.